And God says, it's it's time for you to stop believing in me and it's actually time for you to start following me. And I, I remember being, if not the smartest, one of the smartest guys in every single room I walked in when it came to real estate and investing. But I made zero money. So I went from almost zero to $8 million worth of real estate in one year. Just just, just doing that. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches. Now I'm making seven figures like. Oftentimes people watch this video and see where you're at, see where your YouTube yeah. channel's at, and read your book. And people say, well, so so easy for you, Daniel. It's easy for you to say that because, you know, you're well off. You got things going for you. Could you please uh, cut through the noise and yeah. tell everybody the real deal? What did you start with? How did you get your real estate investing career? Yeah. And you now your equity fund. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rolling. So, I mean, I grew up very poor. Like, like I said, an immigrant, right? I mean, I, I remember getting made fun of because I'd wear the same clothes to school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember there was we, our parents, my family, would sleep in the car multiple nights, couldn't afford to pay a heating bill, well, right? You know, the, February, the car was hot, yeah, yeah. yeah, 100%. Was real, yeah. You know, I remember there was one time, you know, we all went to the park. And my mom, I saw her picking weeds and flowers, and she was putting them in the plastic containers. I'm like, oh, that's cute. He must be giving it to my dad. You know, I wonder if it's their anniversary. You know, it's, it's great. And then, and then two hours later, I saw that on our dinner plate. And that's all we had, you know. So, again, fast forward 18, negative $187.65 in my bank account, maxed out credit cards. And that right there, that's how God got my attention. Because Jesus says, all right, Daniel, you know the Bible super well. And I do. I read the Bible at this point probably eight to ten times over. Sure. You know, my dad's got a doctorate in biblical studies, right? I mean, very well-educated man. Mm -hmm. And God says, it's, it's time for you to stop believing in me, and it's actually time for you to start following me. All right? It, it's, it's a mindset shift. Are you ready to actually start following me now? And I said, oh, yeah. okay, great. So... I loved real estate. I always had a knack for real estate. I'm a diehard Chicago Bulls fan because mm -hmm. uh, it helped me cope with this new country, you know. And so uh, I researched when I was 17 years old because, again, I wanted to at that point, I wanted to do a lot of things for God. I researched uh, what was the number way, one way of people making money, and it was real estate. Right? That's how the top 1% made the vast majority of their money. And I looked up who owned the Chicago Bulls, this guy named Jerry oh, Reinsdorf. Yeah. And I saw that. I read his biography. I was like, this guy made his money in real estate. So I, for, you know, I always had in the back of my mind, real estate, real estate, real estate. And so uh, I prayed, you know, when I saw that negative number in my bank account, went to that financial predicament, you know, I, I surrendered it all. I said, all right, God, I'm going to start following you. Six months later, I met a guy who was willing to take me under his wing and I would work for free. You know, part of the reason why people aren't successful is they're too cool. Right? They're too cool. They're like, oh, I don't want to be in that. You know, I don't want to go to that meeting or yeah. I don't want to, you know, yeah. they're too cool for school, yeah. you know. And so uh, I, I work for free. You know, I, I paid wow. thousands of dollars at the time. My brother and I actually called our credit card company to beg them to increase the line so we could pay for education to learn how to do this thing. Yeah. So, you know, long before that, I started, you know, following and following and, and I started reading and I'd get up, you know, I, I would get up at six, seven in the morning, wouldn't go to sleep till one or two at night. The entire time I would learn about real estate. I would learn about investing, yeah. macroeconomics, hundred percent, you know, why, you what is, yeah. what is inflation? What is, what is yeah. quantitative easing? What's policy, you know, monetary policy, fiscal policy. Yeah. And I remember being 22 years old and I, I remember being, uh, if not the smartest, one of the smartest guys in every single room I walked in when it came to real estate and investing. But I made zero money. And but I you got knew everything though. But I knew everything though. Okay. And I became very frustrated. And whenever I'm frustrated, I go to I go to, you know, God. You know, because that's just who I go to when I, whenever I'm happy, he's mad, it's like, right? I think we should treat our heavenly father like our actual father, right? Or the father that we never had, unfortunately. You know, mm -hmm. I have to say that mm -hmm. now in America. Yeah. Um, and so I, 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 I got very frustrated. And then God took me to John chapter thirteen. And John chapter 13 is one of my most favorite chapters in the Bible because it shows you who Jesus really was. So word for word, it's a story how Jesus and his disciples are in the Passover feast or walking into this room. And scripture actually says at this moment, Jesus had realized that the father had put everything under his authority and that he was from the father and he was returning to the father. Meaning that Jesus realizes that he's the most powerful being in the universe, right? He's stronger than Superman, Batman, Iron Man, Thanos, <laughs> you name it, right? Um, and what he does next, and scripture says, so, as so, cause and effect, he begins to remove his outer clothing, brings out a basin of water, and he begins to wash the feet of his disciples. Right, which by the way, people don't understand, washing the feet at that time was the, the, the lowest ranking slave, not even servant, slave. That was the job for the lowest ranking slave to do. And for him, it was very awkward for him to do that. Right, they're like, Rabbi, you don't do that. And so what the Spirit spoke to me then was, Daniel, your problem is that you have a very good mind, but whenever you walk out of a room, the people's feet are still dirty. Mm. Everybody around you still has dirty feet. That's the problem. 
And so whenever I get a lesson from God, I ask the Holy Spirit on how I can apply it. Because at the end of the day, like people are like, Daniel, how do I get closer to God? I ask him. The person that knows best on how to get closer to God is God, right? Uh, that's why he sacrifices some. Right? And by the way, I believe that the truest form of love is sacrifice. If you love your business, if you love your clients, sure. you're going to make the sacrifices. Sure. Like we said right? in, in Marines too. Right? So you love your country, you love your brother, you give your life for him. Take a bullet Absolutely. for your country, take a bullet for yeah. your brother, of course. 100%. Yeah. So, family, yeah. so I asked the Holy Spirit, it's like, well, what, how do I apply that on a day-to-day basis? So it became very simple. I, I got a, a notepad. And uh, at the time, I belonged to a real estate investing network. And we had about five, 600 people that would meet in one location. And so I remember going to almost every single one of them, and I asked them one simple question. I said, hey, what are some of the greatest obstacles you have in your business? And I got all sorts of answers. And the majority of people said, well, you know, I need capital to do my deals. I'm finding great deals, but I need capital. And strangely enough, Mm -hmm. you know, I would go to some people and they say, well, Daniel, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I make half a million dollars a year. I got $1.2 million sitting in my account. And my CPA is telling me I need to get that money into some real estate deals. Okay. So I'm like, well, that's easy. Right. Just connect the two. Yeah. But I, I offered my value. I, I was because I was interested in actually washing people's feet and serving without expecting anything in return. You know, there's in, in, in this world there's givers and there's takers. You know, for me I'll I always be I'll always be a giver. I love being a giver. I think that's it represents who I am as a man in Christ, as a man of God. So for for me, you know, um, I started connecting, but I also told my the investors on one side, it's like, hey, I know a lot about real estate. Why don't I do you a favor and I'll vet the deals for you? Okay. You know, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll see if it's a good deal, see if it's a bad deal, and I'll kind of just be your eyes and ears. And they're like, oh, thank you. And so it wasn't long before I started connecting them. And one guy called me. He's like, hey, man, I really appreciate you bringing the capital to this deal. Mm-hmm. Do you want 20%? Nice. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, absolutely. And I learned a very valuable lesson in that moment. I learned the lesson that God cares more about the business and the vision than I do. Right? Like, I think if you're a parent watching this right now, if you're a dad, if you're a mom, I think we need to have the realization that God loves your kids more than you do. <laughs> that God wants to see your kids succeed in life more than you do, more than you could possibly ever imagine. You know, and if you think about that, oh man, that's, that's, that's big. And, and you know, because for us as entrepreneurs, we have a lot of times the same desire. We want to change the world based on how we desire it to be. We want to see, for you, you want to see a world where people are more aware of the, the power of, the, of insurance. And we talk about all the time, the power of whole life cash value insurance, how that, in my opinion, should take over the 401k industry. You know, yeah. I, I see a vision yeah. where the American family ha- can have comfortable conversations about finances around the dinner table. Cause I didn't have that. You didn't mm-hmm. have that. People mm-hmm. in this room didn't have that, right. you know? So for, for me, it's just like, well, that's the vision. God cares more about the business than I do. So let me, so I started connecting people with guy offered me 20% and I started learning as a partner. And I started actually being in the closing tables and figuring out documents and, you know, going to visit sellers, no, learning how to negotiate. You started shadowing. I started shadowing because I had some stake in the game. Sure. You know? And so um, it wasn't long before I started. I went off on my own. And by the time I was 23, in 2017, um, you know, my goal in January 1 was to have, I wanted 20 units. That's what I wanted. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and says, Daniel, don't set goals, set standards and expectations. Because if you set standards and expectations your goals will be a byproduct of what you set for yourself, right? Great. So I set standards and expectations. I said, these are the three things I'm going to do every single week. These are three things I'm going to do every single day. You know, like uh, Abraham Lincoln once said, right? You know, if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I'll spend four sharpening the ax. So that's what I started watch doing. YouTube videos, how? Exactly, <laughs> right. You know, and so I set standards and expectations for myself. My goal in January 1st, 2017 was 20. At, by the December 31st of 2017, I had 83. Wow. So I went from- it's in a year. In a year. So I went from almost zero to $8 million worth of real estate in one year. Just just, just doing that. By washing people's feet. That's what I did. Yeah. So when, when you're looking at a massive... Uh, yeah, thank respect, you, sir. Respect. Appreciate it.